Next up, we got when a gang leader confronted Tyson. Mike Tyson. Now, if y'all want more Mike Tyson videos, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Now, I'm checking out a new channel right now, so if y'all want more videos from this channel, let me know. Um, definitely like a little of these, uh, like little short little videos about Mike Tyson. Um, all the history of my Mike Tyson. Now, we did check out like his full uh, uh, documentary. Um, but I still don't know everything about him, so we still gonna make like, you know, these more videos on him. So, hey, let's just hop into it. It's gonna be a fight. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Oh, Welcome shit. back to the Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. He pulled his glasses off. Did you see his eye? His eye was just hanging out his head. What the hell? Video, he was a we revisit comedy? the infamous two fight saga between Mike Tyson and Mitch Blood Green. A genuine beef that 10 rounds of boxing couldn't squash, as the two would face off one more time on the street, this time in a much shorter affair with a decisive victory. It's a movie? Let's get right to it. Alright. I'm already liking it already. Tyson vs. Tillis. 1986. After Tyson's 10 round decision to James Quick Tillis in 1986, the invincibility aura from Kid Dynamite took a slight knock as the two heavyweights battled out a much closer fight than the boxing fans and bookmakers expected. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got, you know, I feel relieved and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. It was Tyson's first time going the distance as he had finished his previous 19 opponents all inside the opening two or three rounds. Ooh. That gave some of the other heavyweight contenders an incentive to catch this teenage dynamo early, halt the hype train, and earn the highest possible payday outside of a championship fight. Tyson said, give me a fight, I want Mike Tyson. Point blank. Michelle Tyson, he's a I'm gonna knock him out. Knock Mitch him Blood Green was one of the first fighters to utilize the new age of digital camcorders to get his message out there to boxing fans. Now I'm gonna show you some feast your eyes on a real heavyweight. There was no social media in those days, but local news stations and televised sports networks such as HBO would air the clips during a broadcast to gauge the fans' reaction. The power. I, 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 I ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably due. Oh, see, if this was, if, if if social media was around and stuff like that, bro, he would have been literally blow. Oh, my God. Because that's literally what everybody do nowadays. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this isn't the first time we've seen something like this. Somebody had like a crazy personality, whole bunch of uh, confidence and stuff like that. Come on now. Conor McGregor is a perfect example. You know what I'm saying? But if he, if he had, because this, remember, this is versus Tyson, Mike Tyson. So this is a different type of confidence you, you bring in. You know what I mean? I know they say it's young Tyson, but still, bro. It's probably due to audio compression over time, but I can honestly say I have difficulty understanding what Mitch Green is saying. Two clear things were the muscle flexing and homophobic slurs, and bizarrely <laughs> enough, as far as my research suggests, this was enough to land him a shot at the hottest prospect in world boxing. Oh, shit, okay. Hey. We at home with it. On the tough streets of Detroit, Mitch Green was a prominent player in 1970s New York game warfare. By the age of 17, he had witnessed his father lose his life in a bizarre Western-style quick-draw shootout, Damn. not long before being shot twice himself, fortunately escaping with non-fatal injuries. Green tried to escape gang life by joining the UBA boxing gym in New York, but by this time, his ties to the street were too pronounced, as he was now hailed the king of New York street gangs by the NYPD for his role as gang leader in the Deadly Bloods crew. Things slowly started to change for Mitch as his reputation as a gang leader was exceeded by that of a talented amateur boxer, the muscular six foot five big man that was racking up copious tournament success, including several New York Golden Gloves. From the Bronx, New York, undefeated in five professional bouts with one draw. Green took to the professional ring in 1980 and quickly started racking up wins over Jerry. But you know how crazy it is for you to be a like six, how tall how tall is he like six four six five heavyweight? And he got hands, bro. You're unstoppable, bro. Because usually somebody might just be bigger to you, but they don't know how to use their size to their advantage. Bro can literally hit you, tackle you, anything he want to do, slam you, anything. You know what I'm saying? We literally can do anything. And he probably got the strap too. So shit, shit, shit. Green took to the professional ring in 1980 and quickly started racking up wins over journeymen and fringe contenders such as Jumbo Cummings. 
Champion in waiting Trevor Burbick became the first man to beat Green in 1985, where Mitch made a good account of himself, only losing by majority decision. Both Tyson and Green were on the fringe of a world title shot, so regardless of the antics, the two were on a likely collision course. The trash talk from Green just helped build more interest in the fight, which in turn certainly struck a chord with Tyson, who openly admitted to hating that ugly mother effer. <laughs> yeah, what's up with this video, bro? Goddamn. Look into my soul. No robe, no socks. He says it makes him feel like a warrior. Makes right. him feel like a gladiator. Tyson met Green for the first time in May 1986 at Madison Square Garden. It was Tyson's bro got a perm? A prestigious boxing video. Nah, bro. Yeah, I, I can't take you serious. You got a perm. Now, I understand back in these times, this was like normal, bro. This is all like the pimp, the pimp name slipped back. You know, I understand. I get it. But, bro, let's be honest, bro. You got a perm in your head, my nigga. I can't take you serious. May 19th. Yeah, I'm just flapping in the wind and shit. Come on, bro. Nah, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. 86. Come on. Madison Square Garden. It was Tyson's first match at a prestigious boxing venue and also the first to be covered by a large television network. Yet, the occasion didn't change the traditional no robe, no socks attire. He was all business and had a personal vendetta to settle with the now not so confident looking Mitch Blood Green. And was so much a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the later rounds. So we'll my see Tyson, what he does about that against Mitch Green. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some hand movement. Shot. I ain't gonna lie though. I ain't gonna lie. I'll give it to him. He definitely got some hands, bro. I'm seeing him. But you know, Mike Tyson, that's all he practiced. You know what I'm saying? He he, he gonna dodge them bitches. So you ain't even. You know, it, but he, I see him. He throwing them bitches though. I agree right to him. Now we see some hands. He throwing them bitches. He took a shot. There's the left hook I was talking about. He did draw a warning from Luis Rivera. Ooh, that body. Watch that body. Watch that body. Ooh. Good left hand. Ooh. Everyone has a plan. And he really didn't even get a he didn't get the full bitch though. He didn't get it. He, he really it kinda slit it kinda went like like his face like this, he kinda like went like that. That's how it went. He still landed it, but he didn't get the full like, you know what I'm saying? You can see it. Everyone has a plan until they up. get their mouth guard punched out of the ring in the first round. <laughs> the green had all the physical advantages. Tyson's supreme boxing skills and speed negated the gap in size and weight, backing up Green from the opening bell, slipping and countering, forcing the much bigger man into survival mode from the word to go. Big right hand against Tillis, and what a shot! Ooh. Oh, a I didn't have to peep! Oh my god, I didn't even see it! Against Tillis, and what a shot! <laughs> That is awesome. ah! Tyson punched out Green's mouth guard again in the third, where after he started. This nigga mouth guard went into the damn stands? Ugh. Imagine you just sitting down in the stands and the motherfucker. You, you try to drink your drink and then somebody mouth guard fly right near it. You know what I'm saying? And that should be in a, like a movie or something. Like have somebody, like that shit happens, fly your drink and they say drink it or some shit like that. That'd be like some funny little shit. I can, I can imagine that in the movie. Tyson punched out Green's mouth guard again in the third. We're <laughs> opponent for having a wide gulping mouth. Stalking him across the ring, landing fierce single power punches. Ooh. Another big left hook. Hey, Tyson, they're a good uppercut. He has to take the stand eventually. Another couple that nigga fat. Well, he's smiling. Look at his mouth. Tyson is smiling, but see, Green has those fast hands. The fight became so routine by the closing stages, the crowd knew they were witnessing a foregone conclusion. Tyson himself appeared to have his mind elsewhere as he bizarrely kissed his trainer, Kevin Rooney, while he was trying to deliver him intricate strategies and details regarding the fight. <laughs> well, Kevin Rooney is in there and just jabbering away 100 miles a minute. Mike Tyson leaned over and just kissed him. Tyson closed the show, trying to score the knockout, but Green's disinclination to engage allowed him to grab and clinch his way to safety, resulting in him losing 9 out of 10 of the rounds on every judge of scorecard. Dang, 9 out of 10? That's crazy. Yeah, but we knew deep inside that I was going to win this fight so easy because of his style. He's a dang tough opponent, and he took some fairly decent shots, but as you know, I won comfortably, and I didn't try for the knockout, and I used a great deal of discipline in there, not knocking him out. Tyson claimed Dang. he carried Green the 10 round distance on purpose to punish Dang. him for as long as possible. And whether wow. it was true or not, Green's personal pride was hurt, and he was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sleep. See that motherfucking perm like a like a like a little fishing net now. You know, I, you know, I, what's the what's that shit they be having in when uh like you a cook? 
you know, if you if you a cook at like McDonald's or whatever, they always have like a it's like a neck thing they put on your head if you got hair. It's like usually for like the girls and stuff like that. That's exactly how this shit look now. Tyson clean. Or maybe right? maybe it's this little shit because he putting like a some type of filter on him. He maybe it's that. On distance on purpose to punish him for as long as possible. Oh, no. And whether it was true or not, Green's personal pride was hurt, and he was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sliver of respect amongst his peers. Green retired from boxing after the Tyson loss and returned to the street to earn a living from selling drugs. He always planned to one day get- Nigga, huh? What's up with these niggas making it out the hood and then turn around and say, I want, instead of living the, the normal, you know, legit way in life and, and winning the most, I'm going to turn around and come back to the streets. These niggas is making it, fuck making it out the streets. They try to make it back in the streets. Huh? What the fuck you mean you just stopped playing and went back to the streets to earn a living, make a drug? Huh? What? Tyson Laws and returned to the street to earn a living from selling drugs. He always planned to one day get Tyson back in the ring, but as his years of inactivity ensued, Tyson progressed to one of the most dominant heavyweight champions of all time, undefeated and undisputed. The days of fighting lingering contenders such as Mitch Green were over. <laughs> It wasn't until a couple of years after their fight that the two would meet again, this time in Green's element, the street. In the Whoa. early hours of August 23rd, 1988, Mitch Green got wind that Tyson was shopping at a local clothing store close by to where he ran things on the street. Tyson had traveled a fair distance to pick up a luxury leather jacket handmade by one of his friends over at Dapper Dan's. As Tyson was chilling in the store with his entourage, Mitch Green burst through the door on his own, high on angel dust, demanding Tyson either give him a rematch or empty his pockets right there on the spot. Tyson, of course, no stranger to altercations on the street, dragged Mitch Green outside and pummeled him to the ground multiple times. Spectators said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. In fact, it was no longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but that's more than long enough for the heavyweight champion to inflict severe damage. There so did he try to talk all that shit? And got his ass beat. Is that what you're telling me? So you got your ass beat out, outside your element and inside your element. You just can't win, huh? He just can't get, he cannot win from losing, bro. Goddamn. Goddamn. Spectator said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. In fact, it was no longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but that's more than long enough for the heavyweight champion to inflict severe damage. There is no footage of the fight, regardless of the clickbait you see on YouTube, but there were many accounts of what happened that all aligned, all except Green's account, where he claimed Tyson sucker punched him and ran. Who threw the first punch here? He did, he sucker punched me, cause he's with his friends, you know, and uh, when he hit me, and I said I couldn't get a chance to get to him like I was, cause everybody was like, me, you know, holding me, like so he could get away from me, so he could get away, and he like, he, was, he ran from me. Green was certain that Tyson You can just tell this nigga lying, bro. Look at his fat ass lips, bro. They just looking like some lying ass lips, bro. Let's just be honest. Bro got a perm on and shit. Bro like a fucking uh, a, a, a bathing ape. Wait, no, you know what's the uh what's the what's it what's the uh what's the what's it called? What is it called? What's that shit that NFTs? That's what he look like. Them NFT. He like one of them NFTs, bro. With the glasses on. This is literally how they looked. <laughs> Yo, couple, that nigga lie like a motherfucker. The world would add enough public intrigue to get his rival back in the ring. But Mitch had already burnt his bridges among the promoters in the sport, with his violent threats to Don King in the past already shadow banning him from ever earning any serious money in the ring again. That's why. After Green's failed attempt to get the bro. rematch with Tyson, nigga. he filed a civil lawsuit for $20 million due to the injuries he suffered during their fight. The former wow. gang leader came away with one small W to coincide with a long list of L's, winning wow. the case and being awarded $45,000, close to what his purse was during their professional fight in 1986. Yeah, I remember seeing Mitch Green's eye after that. It was like, he broke his socket. Broke oh, the eye happened? socket, yeah. He broke his eye socket, yeah. Damn. The Shit. eye socket, I don't know. I s you gotta hit really hard to do some <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> Green remember, they, they ain't have no gloves on, too, nigga. Shit, remember, you, they fight like that, they got gloves on. So imagine without gloves. She, she, she. Ring seven years later, but at that point he was a shell of his former self. That, right? Green returned to the ring seven years later, but at that point he was a shell of his former self and was beaten by journeymen with losing records until he hung him up for good in 2005. As of 2022, Green is still a large as life character, but now employs his energy into his love of Christianity. 
He still has a gripe with Tyson, but I think it's fair to say the two have now moved on, and whenever the topic is brought up today, they both make light of their infamous 30-year feud. That didn't work. The boy's scared of death. You had the street fight, the boy's scared of death. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't y'all have a street fight, Mitch? I, before, I, before, before the ring, before the street. Thinking the man would do something about it. He wouldn't do nothing. Oh, man, what? he freaked me out. Did you know that actually Tyson and Sal... Did, 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 did Mike Tyson make this nigga not even want to speak English no more? Bro, I don't know what the fuck this nigga didn't say, bro. Bro didn't say about 20 words. I didn't understand that one thing. That nigga, huh? <laughs> oh, and look, the only word he do know how to say is Tyson, though. He know how to say that word. But <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Mike Tyson, bro. Bye, Tyson. Our good friends, and he comes to the show. He knew, look, 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 look. Oh, oh shit. Hey, that, you know hey, that nigga hard to drop in his ass. <laughs> that nigga got scared in his head. He like, hold on, this nigga here? Look, look, he trying to play it off right now. He trying to play it off. He laughing and shit. Oh, but Tyson. Oh, oh. Oh, that nigga got to do. Hey!